Hey folks, Jen or Murgriffin here, taking a look at the billet box, which for a little cardamizer tank lover like me, all contained variable voltage, it's been a nice little acquisition. These should be, uh, pre-orders are closed, um, I believe they're going to be supposedly, according to the latest update from a few days ago, should be open on the store and available for order in March for the general non-pre-release public. But uh, let's go ahead and take a close-in look. All right, let's take a look at what comes with the build box. First of all, you get a syringe and some plastic filler tips and some extra O-rings. A bottle that will also take those plastic syringe tips for easy filling. And a very tightly bubble wrapped mod. Took care of the bubble wrap. We gotta get the saran wrap. I will admire the shinies because it will probably not look this fingerprint free and unscratched ever again. And I'll just have a little vape pipe on them. Unwrapping it. Shiny. Very solid. Air holes. Oh yeah. Fingerprint magnet. Nice little button. Drip tip socket. Very nice looking solid little unit. That door slides down. The cardamizer tank. Billet box. Very nice engraving. 3.7 volt batteries, plus or minus side. Uh, the voltage meter. Very easy to read. Doesn't require a special tool. Just moves very easily with your finger. I'll put it about where I like it. You know, 4.2. A filler ball. And you can see the air holes to the inside. So they go around the cardamizer. Seals the top of the cardamizer. Drip chip goes in there. Let's go ahead and break it down. Could probably get it with your finger, but I'll just use a quarter to release the uh, top piece here. And once that is out, you can slip out the actual cardamizer tank. O-rings on the top and the bottom to make a seal around the cardamizer. Nice see-through window on the front. The little spring filler ball. Air holes go through. Nicely machined out. Now you see that little platform on the bottom there? That's actually your positive connection. Um... The cardamizer doesn't screw into like a 510 connector. You, you put it in the tank, you slide the tank in, and the bottom post of the cardamizer makes a connection there, and that's enough to fire it. Interesting design for keeping it all in one box. Now the door. This is the best, most solid, least wiggly, easiest to open slide box cover I have ever seen. Nicely engraved, it's got that groove and the little socket for the uh, kind of spring-loaded ball bearing that's here. It slides in. You got to get it over that little ball, and then it snaps right into place. It's not hard to push down, but it takes a little effort to get it started, and there is no shake. There is no rattle. There is no nothing. It very closely and nicely machined. Built box Rev 1.1. Uh, little plastic blocks in there to hold the uh, positive and negative connections for the batteries with the little spring-loaded uh, side there. The little black bits on the voltage dial, the, the black little hash marks, um, are raised so it's very easy to just catch it with your finger and move it. 
no trouble there, no tool required. Um, also comes with a little thank you note from the Billet Box team. And a page of instructions. It tells you about where to put the hole in the cardamizer between 8 and 10 millimeters, what kind of cardamizers to use, what kind of batteries to use, what kind of batteries not to use. Um, you know, it very clearly says do not use metal syringe needles to go around that little uh, spring loaded. It says what the replacement o rings are for, some troubleshooting tips. All right, let's get going. I'm going to take my standard Bogue 2.0 regular size cardamizer and mark it between 8 and 10 millimeters. Now I may mark just any random spot on the cardamizer, but I will usually pick it up, look inside, and, and where, if where that uh, if where that mark is <clears throat> is too close to the coil itself, or in a section of the cardamizer that if you look inside has thinner padding, I will sometimes turn it around so that it's at the same you know distance from the connector. But I will sometimes move it, and like, like here I'm going to move it a little bit around counterclockwise to the left about a quarter of the way so that it hits about there, which is further away from the coil in a nice thick set of the padding. Now I'm going to use my favorite new Cardo punch, which is from avidvapor.com. Um, you put the Cardo in there, you tighten it down with an Allen wrench, and it basically keeps it from being deformed by pushing in, which is great because it makes the cardamizer easier to get in and out of tanks, especially one that have, ones that have really tight tolerances. I just take one of the uh, end caps and cut a hole in it so that it's like a little sleeve that goes over where I already have the hole punched so I can fill it without it leaking. Then I'm going to grab some juice, stick my needle on the bottle, and suck some out. And of course it's 50-50, so it's not like you can get it out of the bottle fast. In fact, maybe it's time for the magic of fast forward. <laughs> Here we go. Now I took the needle off of the syringe and I'm going to put this little thing on here called the plunger. It fits onto a syringe or like the bottle that came with the built box that has a needle on it. It's from myfreedomsmokes.com. It's called the plunger. And then your cardamizer actually screws on top. So what it lets you do is push the juice up into the cardamizer. And you'll see it come out the like column air hole on the top. But it's also pushing it up around the inside sides of the cardamizer. So what I'll do is I'll push it till I see it come out the top and then suck it back down and then push it up and do that just a few times and it primes them perfectly you don't need to sit and wait they're full and saturated and perfectly ready to go all right now i'm going to switch to that plastic tip for actually for when we're ready to actually fill the cardo tank through that little ball valve there um, i am using a cardo tank filler just because i want to protect those o-rings on the inside there and I'll turn it in and the cardo goes in pretty nicely into that tank. Make it flush on the bottom there. Then I will wiggle and pull the cardo filler off. And the next step is to just slip the tank back in its slot. No screwing, no nothing. You have to get the cardo kind of in the right place. Here we go. And it should just slide in and it's just going to hold that cardamizer in place to make that positive connection and then to keep the tank and the cardo all in one spot you put that top piece back in and you can tighten that up with a coin no special tools required for any of this which is great all right grab some batteries off the charger Now, some batteries are kind of a tight fit in here and were actually hard for me to get out um, with my fingers, especially these black and silver AWs, protecteds. Some other brands are not quite as long. 
Okay, now what you do is you push that plastic filler and there's a little spring-loaded like ball there. If you push it down, you can fill it. And then when you pull the needle out, the ball snaps back into place. I have had in like a week of use, not one single drop has leaked in or out of this box anywhere. So I put in one mil. Now I'm putting in three mil and it's still not full. I'm going to go back for another couple of mil and I'm going to shove them in there and it still won't be quite full. Um, so the size and shape of this tank, which is, I guess, the gentleman's design and that he wanted something that would, you know, not need to be fussed with, but that's about five mil in there and there's still a little room on the top yet to go. Um, so it holds quite a bit of juice. And you put your drip tip in. And she's ready to go. Activation. Slide the door on. And you have a little vaping machine. So, I really like it. This is like the most solid box mod that I've had. This door is so nice. It clicks when you, I mean, it's not too hard to, to get loose, but you have to actually, there's no shaking, there's no jiggling. It, it's not just going to come loose and fall down. You actually have to give it a little push, um, and then it will come right out and make everything easily accessible. Um, you know, the only thing I can come up with are, are stupid little nitpicks, really. Um, it goes from four to five volts. That's probably not gonna make everybody happy. It's fine for me, cause um, I actually, I might wish it would go a little lower, but generally I run cardinalizers at about 4.2 volts. So it, it's kind of perfect. I actually did order some uh, 3, point, uh, 3 point ohm cardinalizers and some 2.8 so I can try it at some higher voltages. Um, I prefer one battery to two. Um, I suppose giving the size the size constraints that I can see why maybe they did the over over two there, um, but other than that, it's just like steampunky gorgeousness. The design of not having to screw the kitermizer in and just sliding a little box in. That little tank holds like you know five mil or more. Um, fills so easily. I haven't had a single drop come loose. Um, it just works like a truck. I'm scared. I would take this everywhere and use it as my main device, but I'm like scared to take it out and about and get it all scratched up because then it will stop being so pretty. Um, so caveats. Other than the stacking batteries, my only other nitpick is the ergonomics. Um, you know, I might prefer a, a side fire button than this placement, which I can't decide if I want to fire this way or turn it around and fire with my thumb, but that's, that's kind of a silly argument. But that would be about my only one, really. It's, uh, if you are a Cardo Tank user, it's a, a pretty cool little all-in-one design that holds enough liquid to keep you going for quite a while. So that's my take on the built box. Your mileage may vary. Um, if you're curious, give them a look on their website. Thanks for watching.